Hey everybody, welcome to FabFit Friday. I am going to be working on finishing the Cardi that I started for my daughter during my crossover Cardi class last month at Stitches. And um, I'm really excited about that. Also, I'm just going to review the um, full bust adjustment that I did during Fit Tip Tuesday. So if you missed Fit Tip Tuesday, um, you'll be able to get a glimpse of that adjustment, how to do a full bust adjustment on the crossover Cardi. And then I'm going to just show you how to finish the hem on the crossover Cardi I started with Anna, for Anna. Hi, Diane. Hi, Judy. And hi, Mary. Welcome, everybody. Um, I didn't make my colorful squirt yet. It was kind of a tough week for me. Um, but I am super excited to be here with you guys today. And, um, oh, Janet is coming in with TGIF. I couldn't agree more. Uh, normally, I don't really celebrate the weekends like most working people because I usually work every day. Hey, Sally. Welcome. I hope you had a nice trip. Um, so this weekend, I am going to be watching my daughter, Abby, play volleyball for one of the bigger grass tournaments this summer. Over the summer, it's called The Dig. And actually, <laughs> I, I started calling it The Big Dig. And so when I call it the big dig in front of Abby, she keeps correcting me that it's really just the dig. But I love watching her play volleyball, so I'm actually taking two full days off, Saturday and Sunday, to go watch her play volleyball. So I'm super excited about that. I'm hoping to get a knitting project started so I'll have something to do when she's not playing, you know, because they have games where they're off or they have to work. Um, so that's going to be my plan and next Friday I'll show you the skirt that I'm starting to knit. Um, hopefully I'm going to get it on the needles sometime later today so I can bring it with me to knit tomorrow. Oh, let me just stop. Hi Judy, welcome. Um, Alright, so one exciting thing if you're um, new to my lives or if you're new to my channel, one thing that I'm working on um, that's a new feature on my channel is a shopping tab and the kind of cool thing that I think might help some people is that you can now click on and purchase my patterns right from my YouTube channel so it's not a link to go to my website um, it's actually a brand new storefront that I'm beta testing with Google so part of that is I get to have a merch shelf so I have my little merch shelf set up and I, I'm slowly adding all of my patterns and things to that. And I thought what could be kind of cool is I can feature whatever I'm talking about um, in my regular videos at the very end of the video. Or you can see, I think um, I pinned the crossover Cardi pattern to this chat, the chat box. So. If anybody is interested in checking out the crossover Cardi, you can get it right there. And for those of you who live outside the United States, I've had some um, issues with PayPal and people outside the United States wanting to use PayPal to purchase things. So this new storefront that I have runs through the Stripe gateway, so it's not PayPal. So that's just a new thing I'm doing. There's no pressure to buy a pattern. I just think it's handy to have it there if anybody's looking for it and I'm talking about it. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to switch my view to my um, table. And you can see here I have my mic right in front and center. So I'm hoping that makes my video uh, audio really clear for everybody. Um, so unfortunately it might be in the picture a little bit. But I'll try to keep it as undercover as possible. Um, oh, Diane said the, this link is very helpful. Thanks, Diane. Um, all right, so I just want to review for you the full bust adjustment that I showed um, during Fit Tip Tuesday this week. So if anybody is interested in that step-by-step um, -step tutorial, you can find it, um, you know, 
on my uploaded videos for Fit Tip Tuesday this week. But basically, um, I was talking about doing a full bust adjustment on a garment that wraps. So you can see here, I'm wearing my crossover Cardi and it is designed to wrap like this. Okay, so if you'd like to button it at the hem, you can actually do that. And you'll notice when, when it wraps, it wraps across your bust. And I think sometimes if you're working with a Cardi, it may be less obvious that you need the room because it isn't designed to close at center front like a button up top. So I was working on one for my daughter and she ended up needing some extra room in her bust. So I'm gonna show you that adjustment here. Um, and you can see, this is really easy. It's a, it's a non-traditional sort of um, adjustment because since this is open on a diagonal, um, what I did was I measured from her shoulder to where her apex was. So I drew that line. Then I drew a line coming across here and then up to the front armhole notch. And I spread it the inch that I needed to add and you'll notice what happened is it picked up this whole piece, creating this space in here. Now, in the video for Fit Tip Tuesday, I showed how to true this up and not add anything extra at the tip. So, for example, you could just true it up like this where you're, um, I'll just draw a line here. So if you don't need room along your hem and you just need it at the bust, you can maintain the original tip of the hem there and just true it up like this by sort of dashing in or creating, you know, a new front that then connects with the, um, the center front above the adjustment. Or, in this case, I added the inch all the way down just to make it a little bit more um, overlap if she wants to wrap it. So that's how you do or add room for a full bust um, on the crossover Cardi. But what I wanted to show you here is if you were working, let's say you were working on a bodice of a dress, for example. And like, let's say the bodice was... Um, I don't know, let's say it was an empire waist and it stopped right here. You can see, you can still use this adjustment to um, add room for any pattern that wraps across the front. So that's what I wanted to just review with you there. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about, Oh, wait a minute. Um, Sally asked a question. She said, could you show exactly the two points you measured from for the ad additional inch? That's the question for me on other patterns. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, so... Okay, so what I did was... Oh, let me... Hold on. I'm just going to draw, um, just going to draw a, I'm trying to use, I'm trying to recycle this paper because like I said, it was something that I was helping a student work out with. Um, it's not my pattern, so it's taped together and I can use this as my, um, I can use this as my thing. All right, so here's an armhole. There's the side seam. And then let's say the front comes down like this. Okay, so there would be our um, front of our crossover Cardi. Okay, so then, oops. okay, so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure from the middle of the shoulder down to the apex. So let's say that worked out to be right here, let's say. Then you're going to draw a line to the center front like this, and then also one to the armhole notch like this. So those are the um, those are the points that you are the lines you need to draw. Now, here's how you figure out how much you're spreading. So if I cut through to here and up to here, and I create a pivot, okay, what I'm doing is I'm spreading.
this the inch. So if we look at this carefully, now this is smaller, so I'm not going to, I'm going to spread it just a half an inch, but just so you can see here. Okay, so you're measuring from here to here to get that inch. Okay, so there's your apex, and notice as you progress to the armhole, it gets to be less and less and less, which works out because that creates sort of a mound shape, or there's it gets to be more and more and more as you get further along to your apex. So that's where you're measuring the inch there, and then also notice that you're getting... you know, about an inch here, and then as you get to the center front, it even gets to be a little bit more right there. So then it becomes a truing up issue. So if you didn't need it, you know, if you, well, so if you don't need to add it here, you can, let me get a different color. Let me just tape this a little bit better here. Okay, you could actually start down here and sort of create a shape that meets up with the original front like that. Okay, or you can just add it straight down. So you can add that amount all the way down. Those are the two things that you can do here. So, Sally, let me know if I answered your question. Hi, Janie, welcome. I'm just reviewing the full bust adjustment for the crossover Cardi, um, you know, that I'm actually wearing here. Um, so that's how you can tell where you're adding it right there. And also you're getting vertical um, ease as well. So typically if you have to come over a big, a full bust, you know, it goes like this. So you need more vertically and then also cross grain. So that's... Um, that's that. All right. Now, let me get the Cardi itself so I can show you where I am on that. Okay, so here is the Cardi that I'm working on. This is a plain um, navy Cardi. Let me make it a little bit bigger and maybe even a little bit brighter so you can see what we're doing here. Um, okay, so you can see that I finished the edges, the front edges with a surged on um, band and I had started sewing the, um, I had started sewing the hem edge on. You can see here that I created this V shape or a point to the bottom of the hem right here. Okay, and I was pinning it on and I um, realized that I did not make my hem strip long enough. So I decided instead of piecing it, I was going to piece it and I decided instead of doing that, we're going to um, actually uh, cut out a new one. So I have to take this out. That's the first thing I have to do. Originally, I was going to leave this on and then just, cre you know, add a piece to the other side of the strip to make it long enough. But then I decided that would look yucky. So, um, you know, if you don't have enough, you know, if you don't have enough um, length to make a strip to finish the hem, because on this crossover cardi, uh, it's pretty long. A pretty lo long strip is needed because first you have your center back, or so from the side seam here across to the side seam here, right? And then you have the front, which is also almost as long or longer depending on your shape because um, it crosses over at the waist. So I made a brand new strip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to um, get that ready. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start on this side down here. 
And you can see if I lay this nice and neat here, okay, you can see there's my center front edge down to the tip of my um, hem, and here's my hem edge here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take my knit strip and I'm going to fold it in half. First I'm going to fold it in half wrong sides together and I'm going to line it up so that the edges, the raw edges of the hem are butted up against the folded raw edges of the band. And I'm going to make sure the band sticks out far enough here so I can cut it off at an angle. And I want the angle to match. I want it to be a continuation of the center front edge. So I'm going to just draw this like this. And I'm going to trim this off. Okay. So you can see when I sew this now, it's going to continue the shape of the center front angle to create a point. So that's the first step. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to get my serger over here. And oh, I have to unplug you long enough. I have to unplug this. Sorry, I'll plug it back in when I can. When I'm okay, so. Got my serger plugged in and my foot controls. So, what I'm going to do here is I am going to get this so you can see what I'm doing here. Just make sure that's nice and sharp. Okay, so I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to start um, on the raw edges and I want to make sure that it grabs it from the very first step. So I'm gonna use a piece of a scrap of paper. And yes, I'm looking on the floor. I'll just use this little piece right here. I just need a little bit. I'm gonna use it as a lead in. And I'm gonna lift this up. And I wanna get the the two butted up edges of the um, band under there enough so that the needles are in the fabric when I start stitching. And I have this paper under here to also keep everything nice and even. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to serge that. Oops. Okay. All right. So that takes care of that little issue. Okay, and then I'm just going to tear this paper away. And there's a little bit of paper underneath the loopers. I'm not going to worry about that because that will actually um, that will actually get wet and fall apart in the wash. So I'm not going to try to remove that from under the looper threads. But what I want to show you here is I'm going to make it bigger again. I can now turn this, I'm going to clip this edge right here, or clip this tail. And I know I've shown you guys how to, um, how to take a seam out by pulling the needle threads. So for the tip of this tail, oops, let me make it so you can see. Oh, hold on. Okay, so for the tip of this um, tail, when I tease apart the serger threads, you can see here, I have two long ones and two short ones. I'm actually gonna pull the long ones this time, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna tighten down the stitch at the point. So basically, I'm just pulling my looper threads, and what that's doing is it's locking down the tip of my hem edge. So I'm going to clip this one off and I'm going to clip these now that I tightened it. We're going to turn it to the right side and you can see 
we're going to have a very nice a very nice shaped pointed edge see all right and then i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to give that a little bit of seam so i'm going to get my iron over here quickly and i'm just going to give this a little press like this oops so you can see so i'm just pressing this right here you know and we've got a nice shaped edge okay so there's my nice shaped edge to my um, hem for the cardi. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start on that edge. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to take... Um, hold on all right so I'm gonna take this this is okay so see there's the the border now okay so see if this is like this you can see that's gonna make a nice finish there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these together so that um, they are pinned together like this so you can see right there it matches at that very lower end like that see okay so that takes care of that now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to pin and I'm gonna use my um, wonder clips for the rest of this and basically we're gonna pin this on practically one-to-one -one. So I'm not pulling the band to fit, but I am trying to make sure that the curling fabric on the hem is laying flat. And actually, I'm just going to keep folding this in half, like this, and I'm just going to get my hem to lay nice and flat, and then I'm going to pin all those edges to match like this and I'm going to keep going so this is curling kind of to the right side here so I'm just pinning them all to match Um, and if anybody wants to watch the full tutorial for the full bus adjustment, I will put a link to the video after I'm done here so you don't have to go looking for it. You can just click the link below the video. So as soon as I get off, I will add that. All right, so you can see what I'm doing is I am just laying this one-to-one -one with the curly edge. That's the one thing about this tissue weight knit. It's very curly, but again, I can control it with these clips. All right, so I'm just gonna work myself across the edge. Make myself a little bigger here. we're uncurling I haven't tried to um, I want to try to get that spray from Palmer and Pletch um, there's a spray that they have that you can spray onto fabrics that curl and it helps keep them laying flat I haven't had a chance to explore that yet so I'm just sort of working a little at a time keeping my curl under control. So 
So basically what I'm going to do here is I am going to continue pinning this and seeing how long it's taking. I'm wondering if I should have started this before I came on. I'm sorry. This is one of these activities where I feel like you guys are watching me like waiting for paint to dry. So I apologize that this is a little bit fussy, but you know, real sewing. All right, I've almost made it to the side seam here. And I'm just gonna keep going, folding it in half, lining all the edges up together. Now, as I get to the side seam, I may start to pull the knit strip just a little bit so that it's not gonna gape away from the body. So across the back hem, I am just going to stretch it a tiny bit. Okay, so I've got I've reached the side seam. So now we're in the back hem here. I am going to just continue to pin it, but as I pin it now, okay, so I've got this piece right here. I'm just going to gently stretch it just a little bit over to here. So literally, so maybe it's a quarter inch shorter in this 10 inch piece, just enough so when I sew it on, it's not going to um, pull away from or gape away from the waist in the back. Okay, so I'm just making sure where I pin, everything is laying flat. Okay, now let's do another section. Okay, so here's another section of hem, and here's another section of the knit strip. So again, I'm going to just pull it a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. Oh, and by the way, if your, um, if your thread curls, when you're working with it, stretching it will actually make it curl more. So again, I'm trying not to encourage the curl. I'm just trying to, you know, just gently make it a little bit smaller than the hem. Okay. So I'm thinking about projects for the fall, and one thing that um, people have asked me about, and I think I might start to do, is I might start showing you how to draft your own like basic set of pattern pieces. And I think I might start with a basic bodice, um, and I will show you how to draft that. And then maybe what I'll do is um, compare drafting it using measurements versus draping it on the dress form and then comparing the shapes. Because, you know, I do have my ditto form, which is very similar to my shape. So I could show you how to um, flat draft a pattern, how to drape a pattern, and then we can compare them to each other, which I'm kind of excited about. Um, hi, Lauren. Welcome. Lauren's watching from um, from Wisconsin. Welcome. Oh, and then wait a minute. Pat says something. Oh, Pat would like to know if can this wrap be made without the serger? Um, oh, and Lewis Carney suggests Tyrial Magic to control curl. All right. Thanks for those for that, Pat. I'm going to check that out. And yes, you can absolutely sew this without a serger. Um, I'm just using the serger because I have it, but um, any knit garment that I, I've i worked with, I have shown how to do serger or sewing machine because I do have students who don't have um, a serger. 
Oh, Sally, <laughs> Sally's voting for that idea because she would love to learn to draft patterns. All right, so we're going to be queuing that up um, next month. All right, so we'll start with um, a basic bodice, and then we will do that, and we'll do the, the draping portion too so we can compare the shapes we end up with. Um, so I, what I'll do is the week before I'm going to start that, I will give you a list of measurements you need to have ready. So if you want to follow along with me, you can. All right, so I've reached the other side seam here now. I'm going to just give it one more gentle pull so that the back is a little bit smaller. I mean, the band is a little bit smaller in the back. Okay, now we're dealing with the front hem. And in the front, I don't really want to pull it so much because I don't want it to gather up. If you're letting it hang open, I want it to hang one-to-one. -one. All right, so I am going to finish this up. Now what we're gonna do here is, I am gonna pin this all the way down to the center front edge. Then we're gonna mark where the stitching line is to create the pointed end of this band. We're gonna sew it and then finish pinning it in place. So basically, um, I think when you're working with a garment like this and you're dealing with knit fabric, you can measure your hem, sew your two points on left and right, and then pin it to match. But if you're off a little bit, what can happen is your band could be a little bit too long and you can ease that in, but again, if it pulls away from you when you're wearing it, it's not going to look good. So I really like to do it this way so I'm sure that my band is the exact right length I want it to be before I create that second um, pointed edge. So that's why we're doing it this way. So you can see we're coming to the end here. I'm going to put one more wonder clip in and then I'm going to show you how to create the opposite point. You know, and I have to say it is hot in my studio and I don't know if I, t I think I told you about this version of the Cardi, but um, I have it on and it's so nice and it's breezy and cool. So even though it's hot in here, I really like my cap sleeve version made out of a rayon chalet. It's nice and cool. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna pin to here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the rest of it and I'm gonna flip it down like this. Okay, so see what I've done is I've just flipped it down as if it were sewn. So this time what I'm going to do is I am going to mark my stitching line based on oops, lining it up with the length and the angle like this. So this is actually going to be my stitching line. Okay, so you can see the little chalk line I drew. So it's even. Then I'm going to cut it off at a quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch. Okay, like this. So I'm going to cut it like this. Okay, so see now, I have the little allowance. I can sew it. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take my, the edge of my um, the edge of this and I'm actually going to flip it around so it's right, wrong, right sides together and then we're going to sew it. Let me see if I can sew it without the paper. Again, if you sneak your fabric in there and you sink the needles into the very edge of the fabric right back here,
then it will also feed in pretty nicely. I want to make sure the point sews. I'm going to put my needles in. I'm going to lift my presser foot up, and I just want to make sure that that stays... how nice that looks so again I'm going to tease apart my oh that was a little bit too long you really got to cut it really short like a quarter of an inch or maybe a little bit more that might be a little bit too short but basically I just need these two longer threads so I can pull those and lock down the stitch like that. All right, so now, just make this a little big again. All right, so let me see here. Let's lay this back down. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this right side out and I'm going to give this a poke so I have a nicely shaped edge and then I'm just going to bring my pressing surface over here so I can stand down all right so I'm going to give this a nice press like this. Oops. There we go. All right. Okay, so I've got that nicely pressed. Now let's finish this up here. So again, I want to make sure that this and this line up perfectly. So I'm going to use a regular pin there. All right, so see, it's matching up right there. And you can see it, the length of it, everything is matching. Now, we're going to sew this. So what we're going to do is, it's very difficult to sew from a point, an edge like this, and go in this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start... Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay, I think that's pretty sharp. I'm going to start sewing. So, like, here's here's a here's one of my ends. I'm going to start a little bit away from it, and we're going to go in the opposite direction. So when I get all of my layers in here, I want to make sure that nothing is curled. And I'm going to just grab my needle threads and give them a little yank off to the side so that I can let all of this fabric just, you know, sort of hang out nice and flat. So I'm just making sure everything is nice and flat there. Okay. And we are going to sew in this direction. And I'm not going to trim anything off, or very little. 
but I'm gonna make sure as I'm stitching, everything is nice and even. So I can sort of use the bed of my serger here to make sure that the curl in the fabric is laying flat with each other. So I'm just sort of straightening them out and then just in between each clip. I'm not worrying about the whole entire thing. I'm just worrying about from here to here. Okay, so you can see here we're getting to the side seam. Here's the starting the extra, so I'm going to have to pull it to match a little bit now to ease in the little bit that I um, made the band just that little bit shorter. So I'm just going to make sure that everything is lined up. And from clip to clip, I'm going to make sure I'm easing that in. There's a little slice in my edge here. I'm just going to make sure I catch it, see, right there. So I'm just going to carefully make sure I catch all that in the seam allowance. So I can't really pull it right there. Okay, and then we can get the rest of this eased in. All right, we are almost coming back around to, oh, we're about halfway through the center back. Oh my gosh, I am going to definitely have to try one of these, get the curl out sprays. Just working a little bit at a time. All right, so I'm at my side seam now, so I've completed the center back, or the back hem, actually. All right, so now let's go down to the front here. This will be a little bit easier because I don't have to stretch it. Okay. All right, 
we are almost to the tip. We are almost to the pointed end. So as I come to my pointed end, I want to make sure these match at the very end. Okay, it's a little funked up there, but I'm going to press it and I think it'll be okay. All right, so now, oh, Mary's seconding the Turiel magic. I'm going to get that and I'm going to try it because this curly whirl is really yucky. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to find where I stopped and I'm going to put it in this way. So right here you can see this is where I stopped sewing or I started sewing and now we're going to do the other corner so I just flipped it over and put it like this so see now we're going to do this other corner I just overlap my start point a little bit here And I want to make sure that this seam allowance does not flip up. So after I get in there, I'm going to make sure it's laying flat. And then again, I'm going to make sure this little part right here matches. We'll see. All right, so we've got the band on. Now let's give it a press. Take a look at it. Hopefully, we have success. <gasps> Oops. All right. Let's see. Let me just pull this out of the way. I am going to do this. All right. So let's look at this now. Let's see how it's coming out. I am going to press this. And actually, let me turn it this way because I want to show you the way it presses. So you can see here that... Well, some, all right, so, <laughs> oh my God. All right, so something funky happened here. Hmm. Well, I might be taking this off and doing it a third time because I think, all right, so look at how attractive that is. It's not laying flat. 
So what that means is, as I was sewing it on, my ends were not staying together like this. They were shifting this way. So now I have like a little twisty band here. I'm gonna try to see if I can press it out. And if I can't, I'm gonna have to start over later. Oh yeah, this is yucky. All right, so, all right, so here is something that can happen. And maybe what I should have done is pinned the edges together on the band before I then pin them onto here. Cause you can see it's pulling and it's only doing it. Let me see if it's doing it the whole way. Wow. This is why I will always be a humble sewing teacher. I thought I had this on. Oh yeah, this whole thing is a disaster. So this, this part looks okay. So, all right, so let me just show you here. All right, so the way this finishes, let me just show you how it should look. And then I think I'm gonna have to take it out and do it once I get off, I'm gonna fix it. But basically, the way these seam allowances lay the nicest is if you press this seam down towards the band and this seam, you know, away from the band. So you get everything laying nice and flat like that. Oh, Mary says, I was wondering as you were sewing it, if it was twisting. I was wondering the same thing, Mary, but you know that impulse you have to just keep going and it'll be okay? The one that you should never listen to, that inclination in your head? Um, that's what I thought too, but I just really wanted to um, try to finish it. So I'm going to press it as nicely as I can for as far as I can. And then I'm going to take out the other side and I'm going to fix it. But you can see this whole side is good. And then as I start to go this way, this is where I start to get a little bit of a twisty doodah. So I think I'm going to start taking it out from the side seam. <sighs> All right, well, the good news is we know how to do that. So I'm gonna take it out and fix it. I started a lot of things when I was teaching in July, so I really would like to finish some of these things. So basically, I'm just gonna start pulling the needle thread and actually, I'm gonna, all right, so right here, I think I'm good to about here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut all my threads almost like I'm gonna air gap it. So I'm gonna just trim the needle threads and the looper threads over here. Oh, I'm gonna use my light, hold on, I gotta, let me, I'm just gonna I have to see what I'm doing here for a second. see anyone who is all done watching me I understand but anyone who wants to see if I can um, salvage this you're welcome to continue to watch me but basically I want to create an air gap or a complete break in the seam because I'm going to pull the needle threads out from the other side and basically this thread almost matches perfectly, so it's hard for me to see. But I think I have a, a gap. Yes, all right, so I've cut that. So what I'm gonna do here is, um, steam a seam. Oh, Pat would like to know about steam a seam. 
Mary says, I think you need to anchor the edges of the band together before you attach them. Yeah, I think I needed to do something. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull my needle thread. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm petting my needle thread along here. And I'm going to take it out like this. You know, and honestly, every other Cardi I made so far this didn't happen. So like I was able to just, the way I'm showing you is, I think it works nine times out of 10 because I've already made several of these cardies and every cardie I've made, I've just folded it in half and attached it like I showed you and it worked out fine. So of course, um, we would have trouble on this one. So see, basically I'm just sliding the fabric along the thread that I'm pulling. So I'm holding the thread in this hand right here and I'm sliding the fabric along. I'm really trying not to break it, although I'm going to guess it's going to break at some point. And so once I get this thread out, the other thread will come out so much easier. Oh, Pat wants me to blame the humidity for all Kathy wampum sewing. <laughs> yeah. This fabric, I want to say also, is very challenging. It's, it's very funky. Like, it sticks to itself, and it's just, it's kind of a bear to work with. But when it's on, it's nice and light and sheer. So once it's sewn into a garment, it's nice, but sewing it into that garment isn't really a pleasure. Okay, so, all right, so I must be getting to my, where I cut the opposite side. See, I'm just petting it along, and I'm hoping it'll start to loosen from where I clipped it over here. See, if you're patient, and I'm trying to be patient, Okay. The other thing about this strip is it might be slightly off grain because I cut along the entire vertical length of the yardage I had left to make a piece that was long enough. So that could be another reason why it's twisting a little bit. Oops, I broke my thread, but I did get it out pretty far. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my other needle thread and I'm going to pull on this one, and this one will come out a lot easier. Oops. All right, so now I did both of them. So what happens when you break both of your needle threads? You find where they broke, and then you can pick it back up again. So like right here, if I can find the short thread, these two long threads are my um, serger. I mean, my loopers, let me just see here. Okay, so these two threads are my looper threads right here. So all I have to do is find the other short thread here. Of course, I can't see. where it snapped. Right here. Then I can keep pulling it. So as long as I leave the looper threads really long, it's easy to see the needle thread. So see, now I'm pulling the needle thread again. And I should be able to get one of them out completely now because I almost got the... Oops, I broke it again. All right, so let's just pull this. Oops. See, so all I have to do is find where it snapped. It'll be a little short one. So you can see I've got my two long ones. And then there's going to be a little short one in there. Short one is the needle thread. All right. 
let me see here. Those are my loopers. Needle thread's got to be here somewhere. Let me get this. Hmm. See, it's just this teeny little thread right here. See if I can get it a few more. I'm just trying to be patient here. This would have been too easy if this just worked for me today. This could be like the mini theme for my whole week, actually. <laughs> All right, let me just see here. Okay. Okay, we broke again, but over here, oops, I was going to say, let's pull, see how much more we can pull the hem apart. So you can see, now we've got the hem apart almost to the side seam. All right, I'm going to cut my... Um, looper threads a little bit so they're not so long because now they're really long so I'm just going to cut them over here so I can get rid of that and then I'm just going to find that needle thread again Okay, now I definitely know you're watching paint dry. I'm sorry. All right. All right, so let me see if I can find. take it from this side. All right, so now we're done to here. Okay, so see, I've got it that far apart now. All right, we're almost to... Oh, we're not. All right, let me just keep going here. All right, so if any of you have been in this situation, um, I'm almost at the point where I want to throw this in the garbage, but I'm just going to continue to be patient. Okay, here's, I've got the needle thread again. Holy cow. All right. All right. I'm starting to lose my patience here. I'll be completely honest with you. All right. So where did I make my hole? Over here. All right. So I'm going to pull it starting from the hole I made and go in the opposite direction now. Maybe I can reach 
the other side going this way. Wait, that light probably isn't in. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna carefully pull it this way. And then now I know the end of the, the one that I'm pulling now, I know the end is free on the other side. So hopefully I can make it across the back here. Now, the one thing about doing it this way is you have less of a chance of making a hole in your actual garment. So if you were picking your threads, um, you know, pick by pick by pick, then every time you pick at them, you have a good chance of making a hole in your knit fabric. So this is the way that I like to take apart knit seams, you know, especially if I really want to salvage my project um, because at least I know I won't make a hole in my knit if I'm pulling at threads instead of digging them with my seam ripper or trying to cut them with my seam ripper. where I started. Let me go over here again. Let me see if I can find another thread over here. Or is it this? Oh, oh, that's all right. So I'm on a mission now, so I understand if you guys <laughs> want to call it a weekend. I might still be working on this next week during FabFit Friday the way it's going, but I do want to get this off and figure out what happened. So anyone who wants to um, hang with me, I'm just going to keep this on because this is reality sewing, I guess. Those are my loopers. If you pull the looper thread by accident, it tightens down the stitch and then it becomes hard to keep going with pulling needle thread. All right. This is, all right, you know what? I'm all done. Here's what I'm gonna do instead. In the big scheme of things, I don't think I think what I'm going to do, all right, this is what I'm going to do. All right, those are looper threads. gonna have to relabel this video how to take apart a serge seam without throwing it out the window I'm just trying to pick at it to see if I can find my um, needle thread again Okay. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. I'm so sorry. All right, here. I just, I want to find that needle thread again, so I'm going to just, I'm going to cut them all pretty. 
pretty short and then work them out until I figure out which ones are the shorter ones here. So I'm not going to cut the stitches. I'm just going to pick them out so I can see where that needle thread is. I think it's this. Nope. it apart enough all right hold on okay all right so I've got two threads Let's see if I can find It's this little thread right here. Oh yeah, I found it. Yay! All right, so I got a needle thread again. Let me see if I can make a significant uh, progress with this thread. Now I can tell you that I'm using maxi lock, one maxi lock thread and one Guterman thread in my needles. And I think one thread feels like it's a little bit stronger than the other one. So using good quality thread also makes it easy to, uh oh. Um, oh God. Wow, I'm getting all of these little sexy, um, I'm just gonna, So I am, I am reporting all of these to move, we report, uh, oh my god, I'm getting all of these. <laughs> Okay, so I'm, uh, I know, I'm sorry, I'm trying to delete them all, yikes. Uh -oh, oh my gosh. <sighs> Oh, I think, are they all gone? I think I deleted them all. Ugh. Well, that was a little bit more exciting than me taking out a seam, I guess. But I'm just showing you here, I'm, I'm getting there. All right, I am almost done taking this out. I'm just gonna, uh, all right, let's see how far we got now. All right, let me see. All 
Alright, so this is where I cut it. Let me see if I have my... my little hole here. You know what, I think what I might do is just cut this hole. If I can't get this off in the next couple of minutes, I am just going to cut the whole thing off and start over. Because this is... Oh, thank you, Pat. Okay, so let me just see if I can get it started from this side. So there, there's a hole. So I definitely have a hole on the end where I want to stop taking it out. So really, it's just a matter of I'm not even showing you what I'm doing, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. All right, this is really... So this is a real-life example of making a boo-boo and making a boo-boo on something that you can't see the thread from the fabric so basically that makes it very hard to take out so alright let's see if I can let me see if I can find all the the threads here and I should be able to find my needle if I can get the needle thread. That's not the needle thread. See if you just pick it out a little bit. Hmm. Alright, so I've got I've got three threads here, so one of these has to be the needle. this one. Alright, I found a needle thread, so let me start pulling it this way. Right, there's one. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. this one. Alright, so I started a new um, tail. And if I have made any sort of progress. All right, so I have a bigger hole here. And then I got, uh, let me see here. 
oh my god, I really want to throw this away. Oh, Janie says, good to see I'm not the only one who has trouble with lightweight fabrics. So, Mary says, the needle threads are better seen on the side with the facing up. Okay, so that's true. So, Mary is pointing out to me that on one side, on the side that was face up, you can see the needle threads better because they actually wrap around the looper threads and then on the underside of the stitch they only show up as little dots so that is true Mary let me see if I can pick at them from the top here my problem is I'm having a hard time seeing oh, okay all right so here we go Here's, I got a good one. Okay, here we go. And also, I want to give all of you gold stars for sticking with me on this disaster land project. So I really appreciate you. Because um, I feel like if I stop and just um, leave my live stream, this is never going to get finished because I'm so irritated. So I'm going to just keep with it till I get the band off. But you can see here, I've got got a good one going here. Oops, of course it broke. Okay. All right, so let me see if I can pick it from the top when there's just one needle thread left. So the needle threads are at the very base of the top. So like if I go in here and just try to catch the needle thread down here. See Mary that Mary gets a gold star cuz see now I can I can pick them right from the base of the stitch instead of doing what I was doing. So I'm giving Mary a gold star. All right, let's see how far. Oh yeah, we're making good progress now. All right. All right, let's see. Ooh, look at we've got only. Yep, we're doing much better now. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so see, you can see here we have two rows of stitching. Mary doesn't mind picking out stitching. I don't mind picking it out either when I didn't just make a, a boo-boo on my live. So part of it is the whole Alright, so see, I'm going to pick at this row of stitching until I catch the needle. And I mean, those of you who follow along with me know if I'm working on something that's taking a long time and it's repetitive, like taking something like this out, I feel like, um, you know, I'm just boring you to death, I'll be honest. So like, I'm always trying to make the decision in my head, well, should I just end this or should I keep going? Um, but in this case, I'm keeping going only because, like I said, if I get off now and I'm all done, I am all done with this. This this fabric has given me so much irritation from the get-go that I really, um, I don't want to work with it anymore. But on the other hand, my daughter really likes the way it feels when she's wearing it, so I, that's why I'm persevering here. All right, let's see. All right, I'm just trying to pick up the needle thread here again. Okay, let's see. I'm real. I only have this much more to do. I mean, it's very close. 
Oh, <laughs> Mary goes, ah, but seeing these issues with you keeps you human and keeps us coming back. All right, well, that's very comforting, Mary. Thank you. It's been a really long week for me, guys. I... been a hard week let me see here although I guess I'll tell you we we moved my mom into her memory care place yesterday and it did go better than I imagined it would have gone but you know most of me is sitting here worrying about how she's doing because we're trying to give her time to get used to the new routine and the new people so I'm a little bit distracted I'll be honest But I really wanted to come on and visit with you guys because I love our time together. I just wish it had been a little bit more successful considering the fact that I really thought, oh good, I'll just sew this hem back on and then um, Anna will have her cardi. Because it's been sitting on my dress form now since class was over. Alright, let me just see if I can pick up where I left off here. Let's see. Okay, good. I got another needle thread. Okay, that's good. Alright, let's see. Okay. Oh, Pat says, um, so your mom isn't in her home anymore? That was such a tough thing to go through for both sides. Yes, well, okay, so just the Cliff Notes version is, you know, my dad was in the hospital for a week with a thing, with a, um, a blockage in his intestine, but he's fine. It worked out fine. Um, and he's good. It's just my sister and I realized how hard it was to take care of my mom at night. So what happened was when my dad came home, I think he realized that it was time that he needed more help. So we did find a really nice memory care place. Um, and the staff is wonderful. It's, um, it's very, very nice. And you know, yesterday was the move-in day, and it, it was hard. But she, um, they can send us pictures of, um, they can send pictures of what she's doing. So they sent some pictures of how she was doing the activities yesterday, and we did get a report that she did sleep well last night. So I'm hoping she's settling in, and I think my dad's gonna wait till Monday to go visit. And if that goes okay, I'm going to go on Tuesday. But it is hard, but my dad needed my dad needed this. So that's my little story. And, you know, I if anybody else is going through anything similar, I really feel for you. It's, it, it's, very, it's very hard because you want to do the best thing. And, you know, that's my mom. So anyway... Oh, Pat says, Fabric Mart has this in a mint green now. It looks funny. Yeah, this is, um, I did not get this particular fabric at Fabric Mart, but they probably do have it. Um, I think, really and truly, I'm going to get some of that stuff that you guys recommend, and I'm going to treat it, and I'm going to give you a, um, sort of a review, not a review, but like a, my experiences using this with that curl helper versus not using the curl helper. So, right, let's see here. Okay. I'm just trying to find another um, needle thread. I mean, I'm almost there now. I literally just have um, from 
here to here. I literally have just a little bit more than a foot to go here. Um, oh, Diane says, thank you for sharing with us, Jen. This has been a rough week. Yes. Um, but I'm looking forward to my dad getting good sleep and sort of rejuvenating himself because he's pooped. All right, let's see here. And I told him the tuna casseroles would continue to come. That's his favorite, like, comfort food. And of course, it's my mom's recipe. All right. See if I can see a needle thread here. Needle thread. Yes. All right, I got another one. Okay. Oops. What if I broke it? All right. We are almost. Okay, so this little bit right here, I'm just gonna, I am not showing you what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, let's see. All right, so, all right, once I just, I'm just gonna cut through this area right here that's kind of a mess. Okay, ooh, I'm really getting there now. Let's see if I can find another needle thread that's not a needle thread when you've already pulled one of the two threads like if you're working with a four thread and you pulled one of the needle threads um, the second one comes out easier, but it's also harder to grab the tail. Let's see. See, those are loopers. Oh, I'm so close. Let's see. All right, I got the needle thread again. Oh my gosh, this one pulled all the way through to the end. All right, we are almost done. Look at that, that was a huge. All right, so literally it went from needing a foot to just needing from here to here now. So I only have that much more to do. Whew. All right. literally just have this little bit okay all right we're almost done all right let's see okay we're almost there Okay, let's see. I just literally have to get this one inch right here. All right, let's see. All right, let's see if I can find a little needle thread. Yay. All right. There we go. All right. Oh, actually, let me just do this. Okay. Let me just get this little gnarly bit right here. Okay. All right. So now let's see if I can put this back. 
I'm gonna get rid of that light. I'm gonna lighten this light. What? Talking to my live stream. Okay, so. All right, so let's look and see what we have here. Okay, so you know what I think I'm gonna do? I've got, oops, I've got it taken out. And I took it out in a way where I think I'll be able to put it back. So I think what I'm gonna do here is let's, okay, here's what, let's, let me get my pressing surface here. Oh, for God's sakes. Yes, Mary, I'm giving it a good press. I'm just deleting all the naked sexy comments from here. Remove, remove. <sighs> remove. Oh no. Remove. Okay, I think I removed all of the... I know, I don't understand that, like, ugh, gross. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm actually gonna, let's try using my spray bottle. I'm gonna give it a little wet. And I'm gonna press the bejesus out of it. So I'm going to let it get nice and okay. And then as I press it like this, I am going to pin them together where they are going together without twisting. So let's do that. Okay, so let's give this a nice press. Okay. Okay, so actually pressing this does a pretty good job of flattening the curl too. Alright, I don't know who this Just Jen is, but she's going to. Honestly, I've never had this much trouble uh, with people spamming my live stream. Maybe they sensed my agita. All right, so look at this, ladies. This is so embarrassing. If I took the time to press this before I started sewing it, you can see it kind of tames the curl without that spray. So... My bad for skipping a step. Look how nice and flat that is now. So this is an example of, you know, don't skip steps. And I'm the queen of just trying to do stuff and skip steps, so I'm gonna have to stop doing that. So I should have pressed this band in half 
before I started sewing it because now look at how nice that's laying nice and flat and I'm matching my edges like this And here's what I'm going to do. The part that I didn't take off, I'm going to actually, when I sew this on, I'm going to sew a little bit deeper, meaning I'm going to trim a little bit off to get rid of some of that. Um, oh, Janie says, I'm afraid we all do that. I know. It's so tempting. But like the one I have on now, I didn't press it in half. I just pinned it and did it and it worked. But I should have known that this um, this knit is just not friendly. But the good news is pressing it flat is really helping with the curl. So look at how nice, I mean, you can see how nice it is. And it's matching and not twisting. So we'll be able to put this right back on, hopefully. Okay, so I've got it matching all along here, so you can see. It's matching, it's matching, it's matching. <laughs> this is an example of Diane would do. Ugh. All right, let's see if I can get this to fit back on now that I pressed it. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the opposite corner that I took off over here. Lay it flat here. Okay. And, oh, you know what? Let's also press the edge of the hem flat. Since pressing works so well. Okay, so I'm going to press this flat as well. Let's do it right side face up. All right, this will all be worth it when um, I see my daughter wearing it. Okay, so see, when I press it like this, it does lay flat. So, and this is with, even without the spray, pressing it flat gets it to lay flat. Well, now I'm just feeling downright silly that I didn't press it before I started sewing it. Okay. All right, so let's see here. All right, so I'm gonna have to even up the edge a little bit too. Let me just finish pressing this. Oh yeah, because see, that looks really yucky there, so I'm just going to skim that off with my rotary cutter. Okay. Alright. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is... See, now it's laying flatter. Like this. I'm just going to trim any little boo boos off using my rotary cutter here. Oh, there was a home ec teacher that reminded us about pressing. Yeah, pressing is important going to even out the places that got a little bit chewed up here because I think in the big scheme of things it won't be noticeable so 
so like right here where it's ratty. out a little what I could do. All right. Just trimming off the uneven parts. Okay, let's see. All right, so let's get this next thing is, since I have it sewn on here, let's just lay it so I can see. Okay, okay so see, I've got it here. So I'm just going to make sure it's not going to get twisted. I'm just going to lay it into position. this and we're just I want to check the length and I want to make sure it's still a good length So I think we're still good. So I'm going to start right here and I'm going to pin this like this right here. And then I'm going to work my way this way. And I'm just going to lay it there and pin it together. Because now I know that my knit strip is matching. So again, I'm not stretching it one, I'm, I'm just laying it one to one in the front. I'm not stretching it in the front. start I'm going to pin it to the side seam and we're going to ease it in a little bit through the back I feel like I am where I was about an hour ago. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm just going to pin this on until I meet up with where I stopped taking it apart over here. I'm going to trim off these uneven things right here.
All right, so now I have it pinned back together. Okay, all right. All right, well, the good news is because the one corner that I did worked out, um, we only have to go in one more direction. All right, so let's try this again. All right, let me... Make it a tad darker. Okay, and then I'm going to stick this on like this. All right, and let's, let's just try this again and see if this works this time. Just making sure my curls didn't really curl back. I think it's going back okay.
coming to the end, ladies. So there's that. Now let's look and see how we did. Ugh. All right. Let me get my pressing thing here. Okay, let's look at this now. Press this flat. I think we're going to be good this time. Oops. Okay, so there's my nice point. All right. All right, so you can see that it's now laying flat. It's not funked up like it was. The one thing I will say for this fabric, while it's a pain to sew, it presses beautifully. All right, now let me see if I could make where I stopped and started work. Still seems like it's a little fudged up here, but I'm gonna press it and get it to behave. have this side. All right. All right, so I'm happy with this. There are two places where the, cur the curl actually curled up and came out the other side, but I think what I'm gonna do is just trim those close. So I am not taking this out, this part right here. I am just going to cut it really close. You know, and I'll work on it and cut it so it's close. But basically, now I have a nice hem. As I have another piece over here where, like I said, I'm just going to trim this really close without trimming a hole in it. And it will be okay. See, I'm just going to trim it really close. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this on so we can see how it hangs. Okay, so I've got my ditto, my ditto form here. All right, so I'm going to put this you see? Yep. Put this on here. Okay. All right. So now we can 
can tie it if we want to. There we go. And you can see the back will hang nicely. All right, so whew, I'm really glad that um, you ladies hung out with me to finish that um, because I really would not have finished it if I didn't. Uh, okay, let me see if I can show you in a better light here. Let me see if I can. Uh, there. All right, so see, I think you can see it better now. So see in the back. So you can see the hem will hang straight down. And then if I want to leave it open, so you can see that it will, you know, it'll just hang nice little points there. So, yeehaw. I'm going to put a band on the wrist edge to finish this as well. So here we go. All right. So um, I know my sister never listens to my Fab Fit Fridays. So I could tell you guys this just between us. She got my, sis my daughter a really nice cashmere sweater for Christmas. And it's too hot. So she loves it, but she can only wear it like on the coldest days. So when she put this on, she's like, oh, this is like the perfect lightweight layer. So I'm really happy that we finished it. And she's going to be wearing it with her Anna dresses. So that's what she's going to be wearing. Um, and she's going to be wearing this with her Anna dresses. So I think it's going to be nice. So that's my tutorial on what not to do. Um, as well as what to do and an exercise in patience for taking something apart that I totally screwed up. So um, let's see. Uh, and we haven't gotten any more spammy messages. That's good. DIYer girl says it's reassuring to see you take this in stride. Lesson: keep your cool and move forward. You'll complete the job in good time. Thanks. Yes. Well. And that's true, although, of course, you know, I'm a sewing professional, right? So sometimes I would like it if I could just make things and not have a disaster like that. But on the other hand, I make mistakes, too. So um, I don't think I'll be working with this fabric again anytime soon. So I'll be done with that. But um, thank you guys for this uh, Olympic size Fab Fit Friday. I appreciate you all for hanging out and watching me fix my boo-boo um, so next week I don't know when I'm gonna start but like I said earlier I'm gonna start um, a series on drafting a basic bodice and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give you a list of measurements that you'll need to draft your own basic bodice so if you want to follow along with me you can so that's what We'll be starting in a couple weeks. Um, I don't know that we'll start it on Friday next week. I have to see how things are going and all these other things I have to catch up on now because I really didn't get a lot of work done this week. But in any case, thank you for helping me finish Anna's Crossover Cardi. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I hope you stay cool. And I will see you for Fit Tip Tuesday this week and then another Fab Fit Friday next week as well. So... Thank you guys and have a sparkly weekend.